Hello Trojans, this is Mr. Gardner. I've got a very important message for you. Today, your teachers are going to take you through a very important process. Previously, and for quite a few years, whenever schools found out there was a lot of danger in their building in the form of maybe an active shooter, most of the times people would retreat into classrooms, offices, dead end hallways and try to do their best to hide and lock down. We've learned, unfortunately, because these events have tended to happen in our country, um, we've learned that there's better ways to go about this. And today we are introducing, or maybe for some of you reintroducing a technique or a tactic called run, hide and fight. Today, we're really gonna focus on the run part and the hide part, and we'll give mention to the fight and we'll talk a little bit about it in here just a minute. I'll share a little bit of information about that after we watch a short video. So I'm gonna turn it over to this video and if you will please pay attention to it. Forty years ago, it was unimaginable. Twenty years ago, it was unthinkable. Today, it is our reality. As a teacher or staff member of the Santa Ana Unified School District, you have only one mission during an active shooter event, to do whatever is necessary for you and your students to survive. We should think of our schools in the same way we think of our communities. Teachers, staff, and students all working together to keep a watchful eye for anything out of the ordinary. This neighborhood watch approach to campus security is vital. If we see anything that appears suspicious, we need to report it. It could be as simple as noticing that a door is propped open when it should be closed and locked. Or it could be more complicated. Perceiving sudden mood swings or aggressive behavior in a coworker or student. Either way, these concerns must be corrected immediately or reported for further assessment. When an active shooter attacks a campus, realize that as teachers and staff, we are the first responders. In those crucial moments between the start of the assault and to the arrival of law enforcement, we must adopt a survival mindset. We need to seize the initiative and decide what actions to take and when to take them. Here are three effective strategies to counter an active shooter assault. We can run, we can hide, we can fight. Don't think of these as progressive steps. First I run, and then I hide, and finally I fight. Think of them instead as options that best suit your particular situation and location during the assault. An active shooter on a school campus is in search of targets. We want to use run, hide, and fight to undermine that objective. For example, the distance of some individuals to the shooter will safely allow a strategy of run in order to make their escape. Other people may adopt a strategy of hide to build a barricade and take cover in a secured room. Still others, primarily due to their close proximity to the shooter, may have no alternative but to fight. If you have the chance to safely leave the school grounds, the run strategy should be your first course of action. Run takes you out of harm's way and puts distance between you and the shooter. Keep everyone together throughout your escape. If you meet others, take them with you as you exit, but do not stay behind if they will not go. If the location of the active shooter is not known or is too close for you to escape, then the hide strategy may be your better option. Hide is very similar to our policy of lockdown. Doors should be locked, windows closed and covered, lights turned out, and cell phones turned off with everyone remaining quiet. 
If necessary, impromptu barricades or other means of cover should be employed. Hiding involves seeking concealment in as secure a location as possible, out of the shooter's view. The intent of the hide strategy is to induce the shooter to bypass your area or restrict his entry and further frustrate his intent. Fight. Okay, so we know this is a serious drill. We're not going to get into the fight part of it. It's a very traumatic experience, and we're not going to practice that. I think what I said in the early part of the video, just let your survival instincts um, take over if it does get down to that situation. A couple other things that are important to point out, um, because we have a lot of students who do drive to school. It's going to be super important that you don't get in your cars and try to drive away if we ever do have a situation where our first or our second responders, let's say the Auburn Police Department, whoever else can actually show up and help us with this, can't clog up the roadways. So it's very important that if you do get into a run situation, you run on your own two feet. We also know we have scenarios where we have students who are dependent on wheelchairs. And by doing this drill, we're gonna be able to figure out the very best way to help those students also return to their homes and. 100% safety at the end of the day. So that's the goal of the drill. Please follow what your teachers tell you to do. Please take this drill super serious. Um, I don't like thinking in these terms, but because like I said at the start of the video, these have become reality in our country. Uh, we have to get ready for when this situation comes up, not if, and hopefully it never does, but kind of getting ready for worst case scenario is gonna play to our favor. And when things do kind of go down in life, um, we tend to fall back on our training. So I want you to take this training really seriously. It's not time to giggle, it's not time to laugh, it's time to really take this serious because something were to happen, you're gonna kick into your training. That's what's gonna take over and that's gonna help take care of any type of like freeze response or flight response. But like the guy said, the most important thing to do is try to get away from the danger. So think run, hide, fight. And again, each one of these situations or these tactics are used independently of each other. It's not a process. So thank you for listening. Your teachers will now take over and we will get into our drill very soon.